What are Amazon's food selling requirements in 2022? If you're looking to sell on Amazon and you have a great food product, but you're not really sure where to get started or understanding what is expected of you as a seller, this video, I'm gonna dive into the specifics as to how you can sell your food products online and answer the other question of, can you sell perishable foods on Amazon? We're gonna dive into those two questions right now. All right, so welcome back to Marketing Food Online. It is Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. So in this video, as I mentioned in the introduction, if you are looking to sell your food product on Amazon, you need to understand a few things before you get onto the platform. So I'm gonna actually do a video series starting with this particular video, and I'm gonna to explain to you and break down what Amazon actually expects of its food and grocery category sellers, and specifically what you need to do to be successful. So before we do, definitely check out our brand new memberships program. There is a the little video right there. You can check us out down below this video. There's a little button that says join is our brand new memberships program. There's three different tiers and you can actually uh, apply for any of those three that you wish to. Um, and each one of those tiers have different perks and different benefits to them. And of course, uh, the top here, you have an opportunity, a top tier actually, you have an opportunity to actually work directly with us and get some advice one-on-one -on -one from our staff as well as myself. And check out the memberships. It's got a lot of great features. Plus, it helps us continue to develop and bring to you these videos. So let's dive right into it. So Amazon selling, uh, food selling requirements are not very difficult if you understand the basics on how they work. I'm going to dive into the three important aspects to get started with uh, and what they expect. So the first one, when you start to dive into the grocery category, you want to make sure that you meet these standards. And the seller requirement performance requirements are pretty, pretty simple to do, but you do need to work at it. You need to make sure that every transaction you do is 100% good to go and every customer enjoys what they get, as well as the customer service you offer them for your product. So your order deficiency rate has to be at 1% or less. So in order for you to maintain your uh, seller account for specifically grocery and food, make sure you work as hard and diligently as you can to maintain the deficiency rate of 1% or less. Number two, Pre-fulfillment cancellation rate. Now, what is the pre-fulfillment cancellation rate, Damien? I've never heard of that. I'm new to Amazon. So pre-fulfillment is if you have an order that's pending and you cancel it because let's say the customer doesn't send you an order cancellation, but they send you an email saying, hey, you know what, Damien? I'm just going to pass on those particular products. That, that baked goods, I don't really need them for my party. Could you please cancel the order? Make sure that you request for your customer to send you an order of cancellation. It's actually a request that they have to do on their end that way it won't affect your um, your actual rate, your order, your pre-fulfillment cancellation rate won't get affected by that cancellation. If you cancel an order without getting one of those, then it actually will go against you, actually instead of the uh, buyer sending you an order cancellation where it doesn't go against you, but you wanna make sure that's also kept at around 2.5% of your orders. So anything less than that is fine, but don't exceed 2.5% when it comes to pre-fulfillment cancellation rate because then that's something that would be negative on your account as an Amazon seller. Number three, late shipment is 4% or less. So what does that mean? So let's say out of every 100 orders, you cannot have a late shipment of over four or those orders or more. What does that mean? Well, let's just say that you have to ship it on Monday, January 1st, and you shipped it, you had a late shipment rate because you didn't ship uh, four of those orders past the 1st of January, that would actually count against you because that is considered a late fulfillment shipment rate. Um, it is based on a percentage. So again, as an example, if you had 100 orders, you definitely don't wanna have more than four of those orders be late because that would be something that potentially could ding you down and not allow you to sell in the grocery category. Now, let's dive into a little more in depth about specifically the product requirements. I'm gonna go through a list of things that actually Amazon requires for the product. Now pay close attention to what I'm about to tell you because these are things that they will definitely not cut quarters on and you can't get around this part, this aspect of your actual product requirements. So you wanna make sure you follow this to a T. Let's dive into that. All right, so number one, product requirements. So food must be properly prepared, sealed, labeled, and packaged. So what does that mean, food must be properly prepared? Okay, so when you make your food product, you wanna make sure that you're following the FDA guidelines for nutritional analysis, ingredient listing. You've got the net weight, net um, amount of the product on the front of the package as well, or anywhere on the package, predominantly in the front though. Net weight of the package, and you wanna make sure you've got the name of the product and of course the address of your business. 
Number two, you must be licensed or have approval from the relevant government agencies for your product you plan to sell. What does that mean? Okay, so if you have a food product, relevant government agencies would be either the Department of Agriculture, USDA, if they are inspecting your food manufacturing facility, the Health Department, or the FDA registration and FDA guidelines. Now, the FDA itself doesn't necessarily inspect, uh, per se, uh, the actual um, facilities you're going to work with. That's going to be either the, the enforcement's going to come in with the USDA or the local health department. Predominantly, Department of Agriculture, if you're producing or manufacturing a food product, would normally fall under the Department of Agriculture, and your local office will be the ones where they'll come in and do an inspection on that. Thirdly, you must ensure your products and business operations comply with federal state law. So this includes anything that, as I mentioned on Amazon, they have a specific set of rules. But this would go outside of what Amazon actually uh, lists what they expect. You need to make sure, first and foremost, if you have state laws governing the type and the way that you manufacture your food product and make it, and federal laws, which would, of course, fall under what is expected from the FDA as far as the processing, handling, and the labeling of your food product. All right, sell so all grocery and gourmet food products as new. Now, I know this may sound silly, but number four is really important because a lot of times people may buy products. If you actually are reselling products on Amazon, you have to make sure that there's a whole bunch of issues with the brand, which I'll get into in another video. But selling and reselling other brands, you want to make sure that you have the authorization to do that. If you're a wholesale and you're buying them, a lot of times Amazon will actually request you uh, to send them a letter or an approval to resell branded products. Now, with that being said, you want to make sure that all the food items, even if you're making the food product, it's listed as new. Number one, uh, number five, food is viewed as date sensitive. So basically, this understands that it, it must have an expiration date permanently marked on every unit unless the product is exempt. Okay, so every food product does have a best buy date, not necessarily an expiration date. Food products have best buy dates. The only thing technically that has an expiration date is baby formula and baby foods. The FDA says it on their website. Uh, when it comes to food products, you need a best buy date, um, and they look at that as a date sensitive item. So ensure, make sure that if you're making your own product, that it's got that best buy date. Next up, keep the fulfillment center shelf life details up to date of the grocery product. Now, this is ultra important. So Amazon's fulfillment centers, if you're using FBA and you're actually tapping into their warehousing, you want to make sure that all the food products you have in their warehouse is actually up to date and is within a certain period for the consumer to consume it. So for instance, in January, if you put a product in there in the, in the warehouse and you have only about three months shelf life, you need to make sure that you have a long enough window of time for expiry that that is, or best buy date, that is uh, able to be consumed by the consumer. So make sure that you have all of those shelf life dates up to date. Next up. Labels must be in English on all products covered by federal, state, and local laws. So basically, the federal labeling policies on the FDA website will tell you specifically as to how it needs to be labeled, and that actually includes pet food as well. Also, next up, enclose and seal the food in packaging suitable for shipping. Now, keep this in mind that it must be food from contaminate, uh, must be kept from contamination, spoiling, melting, or damage. So whatever, if you have a product, let's say chocolate pretzels, and they're very easy to be broken, make sure that they're in a rigid container or something that won't break them because the customer doesn't want to buy broken things. And then when it's in the warehouse unit at Amazon, it's going to be touched and moved around and grabbed and boxed and everything. So ensure that you've got your food product, no matter what it is, in some type of packaging that it will be best when it arrives to the customer exactly the way they expect it. Okay. Next up, when you sell products in multi-packs, this is going to be multi-pack. Let's say there was a bag of chips and you had five variations and five flavors of chips, but it's actually in a multi-pack. You want to make sure that the expiration date on the multi-pack packaging must match the earliest expiration date for the product inside. Okay. So on the outside, for instance, if you have a different variation of expiration or best buy dates on those food products, make sure that they're the one that's expiring the most earliest is the one that's going to have the expiration date on the packaging. Because if you open a box and you've got several different types of flavors of chips and two of the bags are actually going to expire in a couple of weeks, the other ones have a few months, that's going to pose a problem. Okay. Now, next up, the lastly though, you must list grocery and gourmet food products using the manufacturer's UPC code. So if you're actually, again, selling somebody's product that's already manufactured, um, let's say planters peanuts, and you want to resell planters peanuts, make sure that you're using specifically the UPC code to actually classify the product on Amazon's catalog. Okay, 
So that is a really quick rundown. Of, we're going to have a couple other videos. I want to explain more about refrigerated and frozen foods and also how to validate what's known as the chill chain and a few other items if you're selling bulk food items. We're going to get into that as well. In this video, I wanted to cover the really beginning basics, seller requirements and the product requirements. So if you're looking to sell food on Amazon, definitely let us know if you've got questions down below this video and keep an eye open for our next couple of videos where we're going to get into more in depth about specifically chilled and cold and refrigerated foods. If you want to sell frozen foods or even fruit and fresh vegetables that are perishable as well, we're going to dive into that as well. So I'll see you guys on our next video.